Welcome back everyone, I am The Depressed Eeyore and this is Dragon Warrior 3. So, our actual hero is going to be Sine this time. She's already geared, fully geared up, already level 8, and she knows Blaze, Heal, Expel, and Return. Uh, Gear-wise, I have pretty much the best gear you can get on this island for, um, the, for the character classes that I have in my party right now. As I mentioned before, this, this uh, party I'm using is definitely not optimal in even the slightest sense. And I'll go over more why that is. Kassen, uh is going to be probably our best attacker. Um, she has really good high, good stats already, and all she has equipped is a training suit. So Kassen is our fighter. Mistia is our merchant. Right now she actually has the highest defense because she, ha she was able to get a turban. Um, Originally, I had her equipped with a leather helmet until I realized you can actually get a turban from the item shop, which is pretty much a merchant-only helmet. Um, chain sickles are the best weapon we can get here, and uh, that's about it. Um, one thing to note is Mistia is the highest level, and she levels higher. Uh, merchants high level, high, sorry, merchants level faster than any other class, as far as I can tell. And of course, our last person is Koakuma, who has 96 luck already and is a goof off. Uh, the chain sickle at least makes her somewhat viable, um, but she will quickly drop off in usefulness. Um, and yeah, that's about all I can really say about that. Alright, anyway, I went ahead and waited until it was nightfall. So, our mother will wait out there, and if you talk to her, she'll immediately um, call you in to go sleep and stuff like that. Um, Luisa's um, cafe is much doing its thing. Actually, I'll check upstairs just in case. I don't think there's anyone up here. Nope. Oh, a kitty cat. Meow, meow, meow. Alright. So yeah, I'm just showing off what's here at night. And I'll probably do the same thing for Reeve once I get over there. Hello, unconscious man. Well, hi. D didn't I meet you at the eatery today, Hiccup? So that's the guy that was giving us advice. We're closing for the day. Please come back again tomorrow. This area was blocked off earlier. What business do you have this late at night? Won't your mommy be worried if you don't go home? She says to the character that's carrying around a chain sickle. Anyway, uh, level-wise, we're more than w uh, ready to fight, get through the tower, and all that good stuff. Um, it's this will going fully geared out will definitely give us a boost, and we desperately will need a boost, because this party is not fantastic. Um, for one thing, we have no spellcasters besides Sine, so that means our only healing and attack spells will be coming from Sine, and right now all she knows is blaze and heal, and more than likely I'll be saving all of, of Sine's MP for um, healing. Because besides heal, the only th way we're going to heal is through medical herbs. Um, Kassin, Kassin, sorry, uh, will be just fine. She's self-sufficient and does a lot of damage, and once we get her an Iron Claw, her attack power will increase greatly. Uh, Mistia will be okay. She's kind of like a pilgrim, but without spells, um, and that's unfortunate. Also, can't she, like... Yeah, she can also appraise, which... Looks like a shield. This is worth 67 gold pieces if sold as to an item store. Doesn't look especially cursed. So she'll actually tell you if it's a cursed item. That's kind of nice. Um, and then for Kokuma, Kokuma is gonna be okay for this first few, for this first quest at the very least. Um, but beyond that, uh, her attack power is just gonna fall further and further behind. Also, there's some aspects about goof offs that will all show off as we go along. Anyway, um, oh, one more thing to show off: if we go to the castle, stay overnight at the inn and come back in the morning, please. So yeah, we can't go to the castle at night, and this is usually for most castles in this game. Alright. Alright, first step. Um, since you get to start with a party of four, you'll generally fight larger groups right off the bat, which will help with grinding uh, a little bit faster. And there's some tricks you can do in this. Uh, if I did something like parry with Mistia, and then and then go back and hit fight, uh, Mistia will actually get the benefits, of, uh, some of the benefits of parrying. Um, on top of being still being able to attack. Oh, Kokuma's taking a break. So yeah, that is the thing about goof-offs. 
They actually do learn abilities, though the game doesn't tell you when they learn new abilities. But those abilities are all useless. I think there's maybe one that could possibly do something. And as you can see, Misty also found two pieces of gold on top of the gold we just found. So a little bit extra, you know, a little extra change. That'll randomly happen. Um, Enemy-wise, everything here is just pretty straightforward. The only thing of note, I think, is maybe some babbles, which can uh, poison you. Everything else is just regular attack fodder. Anyway, I'm going to try to get up to Reeve before it goes daytime. And as always, I'll go ahead and fast forward through this. But uh, yeah, Kokuma will get a, uh, a bunch of um, little quirks that she'll do as you go through, um, as she levels up. Um, surprisingly, there's a lot of them. I didn't really expect that many. Um, some of them will be like, she'll try to run away even though she can't. Um, I think some of the later ones, like the much later ones, end up being things like she smells her sock or something like that. So it's, it's some weird stuff. Pretty much it's just little goof off things where they don't really do anything. I think I'll be okay for a little while. Um, did you update the thief key? No. Okay, so you're still saying the same stuff. I'm checking out Reeve to see if there's anything that happens at night. Oh, well, there's this guy. That child's parents were done in by monsters, they say. Poor thing. about it. Now, one of the characters here in daytime mentioned taking a look at things that look out of place, and there's definitely something that's out of place in this forest to the south. So I'll go ahead and show that off real quick, though I'm probably going to take the long way around, one way or the other. So yeah, this little spot here. Um, for one, there's a jailer door, which we can't open. But this is a shortcut that will take you directly into the tower, towery sections of the um, underground passage. I'm not going to bother going up uh, that way, I'm actually going to go the long way. Maybe for extra experience and gold, but also I think there's some chests we can get along the way. I'll try not to fast forward too much because I do want to show off some of Kokuma's goofy things. Not this time. Now this party will evolve as we go along, but for right now it's going to be it's going to be a thing. Like I said, any party that doesn't have a pilgrim is going to be having some troubles because for one, you won't have very much healing besides your hero. Sheesh! Look at these encounter aids. When I was a kid, I had a uh, that old Nintendo Power Magazine, and some of the things that some of the issues started doing was they put little cards in the back that showed various games, on, and the cards themselves were kind of just useless, but on the backs of the cards they had like little challenges, and they kind of ranged from like beginner, intermediate, and expert. And there was one for, um, oh, Kokuma leveled. So I'm going to show this off. Strength 1, Agility 2, Vitality 4, Luck 8, <laughs> Intelligence 1, and HP. Now, something about leveling up in this game is it's very, very complicated. Um, the way your stats increase is based... The, the algorithm takes what your current stat is and compares it to a baseline. If you're falling very, very far beh behind in a certain stat, you may get like a plus one on top of what you're, whatever you're gaining. But if you end up being ahead of that baseline, it can reduce how much uh, your stat increase or even neg negate it entirely. And this can cause some very odd effects if you end up trying to use things like seeds. So seeds in this game are... about half of them are useless because of the way this love the uh, stat system works in leveling. There we go. I've had uh, Kokuma gain like 17 luck on a level up before. It's pretty crazy. 
And I think I was saying something else, but I don't remember what it was. I think I was talking about how our party's kind of screwed at the moment. Uh, let's go down first. Like I said, this stuff is just fodder for the most part. Go ahead and search this chest. Oh, glory, perfect. Next. Wayfarer's clothes, which we'll just sell because we already have those. We also have no way of curing poison, but that's nothing new for me you now. For me at this point. Oh, uh, Kokuma was lost in thought, so she didn't act, it, act this round. The party will get better later on, but I can't really say when that will be. Because um, I will introduce at least one other character. Go from there. Now when that will be, it's a bit unknown. Alright, 16 gold. As far as strategy is concerned, it's uh, rather straightforward. And as you can see, I control my entire party unlike uh, Dragon Warrior 4. It does make things go a little bit slower. And there's also like little things that you can do in um, Dragon Warrior 4 that you can't do in Dragon Warrior 3. For example, I can't, in under condition, I can only look up HP and MP, I can't look up everyone's attack and defense. Alright, so if we take the stairs here, we're now back into this area, but from a different angle. So really, taking the long way around got me some Wayfair clothes and a, a medical herb and some gold. And honestly, every little, every little bit helps, so I'll take what I can get. Then here we can find some more gold. And then there's a door here we can't open. Alright, so we're pretty much good to go here. Now we're fighting frog ores. So we're going to be fighting tougher enemies here. I actually went through this tower and fought enemies here to get uh, experience in gold faster. So I already know I'm more than capable of fighting what's here. Anyway, if you head this way, you can run into more frog ores. And you can actually go... As you can see, very big groups. It's usually consistently like six guys, you know, four to six uh, enemies to fight at once. And Kokumo is lost in thought again, and Kassen levels, good. Strength goes up 3, agility, vitality, luck. Yep. The level ups will be pretty boring except for the hero, because the hero can actually learn spells. Anyway, plot-wise, just to kind of recap on that nonsense. Um, so we're the son of a, a legendary hero. Or sorry, daughter of a legendary hero. And if you recall, I think we ran into this area before, so this we can actually get to the castle from the tower. Anyway, um, but anyway, so we're we've already been allowed to go adventuring, and our mission is to fight the Arc, uh, to defeat the Arcfiend Bar Baramos, which we don't really know any information about. Uh, Mask Moss, by the way, can cast the Surround spell, which will make it very a lot more difficult to hit them. Um. But beyond that, um, we, we've been hearing stuff about a thief that got um, who lost his key to a sage that's up on this tower. So we're going up this tower to get the thief's key. Uh, we need the thief's key because um, right now the, the passageway to the other continent is sealed. And the only way we can get it unsealed is if we talk to a certain person that is behind a locked door. Granted, we don't really have that information. <laughs> I don't really recall when you learn about that. Definitely wasn't in town or the castle. 
But if we had co continued going around the island, we would have found a shrine and um, I think a cave. And the cave would be have a wall that blocks that blocks your way essentially. Anyway, we can head over here. See a whole lot of nothing. Just speed through this real quick. Find some extra gold. Yeah, transitions tend to have a really high encounter rate for some reason in this game. And once again, Kokuma didn't do anything that round because she was lost in thought. You might be wondering why the hell am I bringing a goof off along? There is one benefit of having a goof off, well, besides having an insane amount of luck. Um, but we're not going to see it for a little while. But don't worry, the party will improve a little bit. Uh, at a certain point. Also, if we go down here, there's an inn here and you can rest. It does cost gold, but it saves you the trouble going all the way back. We shouldn't need to do that, we should be fine. The only thing we're gonna might we'll have some trouble with is poison. If we get poison, there's not much I can do about it besides just try to outheal it. These areas are actually rather big, so that might be more difficult than you might expect. Luckily, with chain sickles, everyone's hitting hard enough to kill everything one hit, and Kostin's using her fist as always. So the tower's pretty straightforward. There's only, I think, like four floors, not counting the basement. And as always, I'll walk around to see about getting uh, whatever treasure happens to be around here. I don't really recall what's here besides the key, obviously. I think Kokuma did something, but I missed it. Okay, that's progress. Let's uh, go around the other way. Hope you guys don't mind the fast forwarding too much. The dungeons are bigger space wise, but I mean, they're not too overly complex in most cases. Treasure chest, and we find a leather helmet. And in uh, Misty, I found some extra gold. Oh, there we go. We can find some stuff here. Search, and we find another leather helmet. We actually have quite a bit of spare armor that we're just going to end up selling. Now one other thing that's kind of interesting is behind the scenes, um, all your roles are predetermined in this game. Or sorry, not not the. Well, actually, yeah, even I think even the roles are predetermined. Um, but encounter rates are predetermined. Like it's based off steps or, or something like that. Well, it's not based off steps. It's based. It is random. But the seed doesn't get changed whenever you load state. I think it's, that's the way to say it. So, like, I just had an encounter. If I had a save state that was two steps beyond, uh, back, and I took two steps from that save state, I would still get an encounter no matter what. So there's no way to, like, save scum or w out of, away from encounters. They will always happen. I don't remember if it will always be the same encounter, but it definitely always at least happen. So you can't really manipulate the RNG in this game that well. I think it's the same thing for combat, like if you miss an attack and you try it again, I think you always will still miss the attack. And these guys were bewildered, so we get to get a free hit in, and that's more than enough to kill them all. Also you can fall off and you will end up outside, which just leads you to go back inside because there's no place you can go on the island. Uh, this just is, this is just gonna loop around, like so. Okay, and then we can head down here and get this chest. We can go to the wyvern, so we can, that essentially is a return spell. And there are stairs going up. I'm 
pretty sure that stair going up is the right direction to go. Okay, Babbles can poison uh, with their attacks, so be careful about that. I find this is a little bit easy, but like I said, I am rather well leveled and fully geared, decked out in gear. Trust me, the, the power level is going to drop drastically. Um, there's another stairs up you can take that leads you to the outside part, which is kind of useless because you can't get through the door. So, you have come, Sune. I dreamed that I give you this key, so I give you the, the thief's key. Do you accept it? Sure, I guess. Well then, be off uh, with you, Sune. I'll go back to my dreaming. So yeah, we now have the thief's key, which I'll go ahead and make room for. Okay. There's no door command in this game, so you have to just do the um, use the item itself, and I'll open it. And there's nothing really else in the tower itself, so we're just going to drop down. Then go back in, and then go downstairs. So there was a locked door in the um, part up here that we need to go open. After that, uh, we should be good to go. How are we doing gold-wise? Alright, yeah, we're definitely getting a little stockpile of gold. Gear shouldn't be too bad for us, because really the only person that's going to buy expensive gear is the hero at this point. Oddly enough, Kossin's actually our weakest attacker right now. Goof-Off actually does more damage when she's not taking a break. Alright, so we can go over here and open this door. I'll open that. Agility Seed. Medical Herb. Alright, so the Agility Seed can can potentially be useful. Um, in fact, you can actually kind of safely use it on the hero in this case. Um, there are charts and stuff that explain this more in detail about when and where you can use um, certain seeds. Um, for certain classes. As far as I can tell, you can start using them at level 1 for the hero, so I will go ahead and do that. There we go, 1 point. I'm not going to worry about maximizing it because it will kind of defeat its purpose. Little increases shouldn't uh, influence it too much, but if you had like stockpile a bunch of them, it could uh, lead, lead to only a temporary benefit because the uh, You'll be above the baseline, and so the, the, the algorithm will balance out your stats automatically as you level up. Um, some characters will have zero use for certain um, certain seeds. For example, the goof off has zero reason to um, ever use a luck seed. Also, Kuokuma broke out in a smile for whatever reason. And also, there is the Vitality Seed and the Intelligence Seed. Both those seeds are completely worthless and will actually hurt you if you use them. Um, the way Intelligence and Vitality work is they influence how much HP and MP you get. But, in, the, in this game, the algorithm for gaining, in, uh, gaining HP and MP is, is coral, it's, it's based off of how much um, vitality and intelligence you gained for that level up. So if you gained zero intelligence for that level up, you would gain zero MP. Which is awful. So if you eat those seeds, you essentially will stunt your HP and MP growth. So there's no reason to ever use them. And Kokuma was lost in thought, and the we are actually so strong that the enemies are running away from us, which is fine, because that will quickly balance out. Anyway, we'll just keep doing our thing. Uh, Kokuma broke out in a song, it doesn't do anything. And yes, I can read the text that quickly. And just like in uh, Dragon Warrior 4, if you target an air a group that's already been destroyed, you will 
uh, auto fail the attack. Anyway, uh, so what we're gonna do is just take the stairs here. This will take us right back where we need to go. So yeah, I can just use the key here. Blasted, that blasted all- yeah, okay, you already told me all that. It would be really funny if it was nighttime right now. So technically, yeah, I guess you can get in here if it's already- if you go this way. And it's fine. Alright, so we can go ahead and open a door here. Talk to this guy. Can break open the seal on the travel door using the magic ball I hear. So there you go, information about the seal on the cave that's connecting to the other continent. We need a magic ball for that. Alright, so thief door over here, and over there. So I'll quickly take care of those. Magic ball can break down walls, they say. Like, everything is going to tell us about the magic ball. I guess that's fitting, because, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do next, so... Long ago, the travel door used to be in the easternmost part of Aliahan. Alright, so it's letting us know about the travel door. I'm going to go ahead and just zoom around here. And open this door. Say there is an old man who makes magic balls in the village of Reeve. Alright, so now we know the magic ball is in Reeve. Which has its own fair share of locked doors. So let's get out of here. Zoom. Uh, let's go ahead and sell some stuff. Uh, Kossan, I think it was. Leather helmets. Other helmets. I think Misty has nothing. Sell stuff for Sine. Nothing for Sine. Okay, so we're good to go. Anyway, there was a locked door up here. No, there wasn't. I was a liar. There was a locked door in the end. Yes, there was. Seems the man in the front room tried to make it magic ball and failed. Front room? I don't believe this is the front room, but whatever. I wanted to sail the far seas. Alright, well he blew himself up, got it. Um, I guess we can go up here real quick. Say hi to our mom. Welcome back, Sine, my dear. You must be exhausted. Sit down and rest. Your friend should come in and rest, too. Good morning. Time to get up and go, Sine. Alright, Mom. Okay. So our next stop is the village of Reeve, which is to the north here. Dead, dead, dead. And runs. Frame right. ran away, that's fine. Kokum decided to smile. So yeah, large groups here. Not that they can really do much to us. Okay. So a few things we need we can do here is one we can go to this door. And open it see this guard here. If you journey east and go over the mountains, they say you will find a small lake. Okay. Not sure what that really tells me, but thank you. And then there's, of course, up here. Just 
pot here. I'm gonna go ahead and just look at it. See nothing. Next. I've heard this story already. Go ahead and break the seal of this magic ball. Alright. So if we look at our inventory, we now have the magic ball. So we have that, so we can supposedly get through whatever thing is blocking our way up ahead. There's the lake that was mentioned. And then there's the shrine down here. Which, of course, you need a thief key to even look at. Oh, young lady, do you, do you have the magic ball? No. That's out of the question. Go back to Reeve. You must go to the Cave of Enticement. You will find it near the a spring. So probably near that lake. I'm pretty sure there's nothing in these jars. This game isn't as uh, crazy about its hidden items. There's the lake. It's rather small. And then there's this. This is the Cave of Enticement, but the stairway is sealed off by a stone wall. So yeah, you can't go any further without the magic ball. And now the way is clear. And we don't have the magic ball anymore. Alright. So, I'm gonna go ahead and call this a video. I am the Depressed Ewer, and this is Dragon Warrior 3. When we come back, we'll go to the other continent. See you guys later.